Hey everybody, this is Paul from Ortho Eval Pal, and today I want to do a little demonstration on a cervical spine evaluation. First thing I want to do is thank Andy here for uh, being my patient. He's actually been having some trouble on that left side, and I also want to remind you that um, these videos are made for medical professionals to, to learn and hopefully help diagnose patients better. Um, so Andy, first question I want to ask you is, um, how old are you? 46. 46, and uh, how long has this problem been going on? Uh, shoulder belly pain, a number of months, but more recently, a couple of months, is the numbness tingling in the fingers. Okay. Uh, any trouble uh, sleeping at night? Nope. Okay. So getting your neck into a certain position or arm in a certain position isn't a... When I wake up in the morning, it's a little more tingly, but it doesn't, doesn't wake me up or anything at night. So. Okay. Great. And can you explain where most of your discomfort is? Most of my discomfort is, it feels like muscular pain, like down my trap and into my shoulder blade. Okay. But right. like I said, more recently, it's, it, I don't get pain down the arm, but it's the, the feeling of pins and needles or numbness, especially in my index finger. Okay. No other major medical condition at this point that we know of or anything like that? You haven't had no. any big injuries? You haven't hit your head or neck or fallen or anything like that? Nope. This has just been progressively getting worse? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, have you done any treatment to help make it feel better? Not specifically. Doing a, uh, Ryan's been dry needling me a little bit for the, okay. the shoulder blade stuff, which seems to help a little bit. Okay, so you've been having some spasm in there and yep. that helps with that. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to start off with reflex testing. We're going to do some sensory testing, manual muscle testing, and then we're going to get into some special tests to see if we can kind of isolate this and focus on what the problem might be. So I'm a big advocate of reflex testing right away, so we're going to start with C7. We hope that he can really relax here so we get a little C7 there. C5. Not really much. And C6 don't seem to have too much there. C7 on this side. I'm not getting anything. I did on that side. C5. Nothing. And C6, just barely over here. So C5, C6, very similar on both sides. I'm not too concerned because they are the same, but he does have a C7 reflex on that triceps and he does not on this side. So now we're gonna do a little sensory testing. So I'm gonna have you hold your hands like this. We're gonna start up here, C5. Tell me if this feels the same or different. Same. And I always tell the patient that, tell me if it's the same or different from one side to the other, not compared to the previous one that I tested, okay? So we're gonna go here, same or different? Same. Same or different? Same. Same or different? Same. Same or different? Same. Okay, now we're gonna do some manual muscle testing. We're gonna hold those fingers out like this. T1, we're gonna do the intrinsics, hold tight, hold tight, hold, hold. Okay, those are equal. We're gonna do some nice circles like this. C8, hold tight. Try to keep it nice and tight. C8, good. We're gonna do C7, which is gonna be the triceps. I want you to hold here, give me some resistance. And I can collapse them there. We're gonna do C7 on this side, hold tight. And I can't collapse them there. Let's do C6. We're gonna bring the wrists up, hold tight. Hold, hold, hold. He's able to hold here. C6, hold, 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 good. Can you give me some biceps? C5. Now, you need to remember there are other muscle groups that help to flex the elbows, so I also like to do supination, which I think is a better uh, indicator of a C5 problem. So I want you to hold here. Don't let me turn your hand inward. Hold, it's good. Hold this one. Excellent. We can also rule out a shoulder problem by checking his deltoids, which are also C5. Hold here. Don't let me push down. Don't let me push down. Good, those are equal. We're gonna go here. Good. And hold. any problem there? No. Nope. okay. So the next thing I wanna do, so we have weakness in the tricep. We have a loss of reflex in uh, the tricep area also. So we're kinda of looking in the C7 direction. I'm gonna do a little cervical spine compression. So I'm gonna have you look straight ahead. I'm gonna put a little pressure down. Any pressure on this one? No. 
Okay. No pain going into the shoulder blade or tingling going onto the arm? Nope. Okay, so that's a negative cervical spine compression test. I'm now going to do a Spurling's test, and I'm going to tilt his head back. I'm going to rotate him toward me. I'm going to laterally flex him. And does that hurt? Yeah. And where do you feel that? Mostly in the down in from the trap down into the shoulder blade. Okay, so going down into the shoulder blade. So that is a positive Sperling's test because it's offering radiculopathy. If it only hurt in the facet, then it's probably just a facet that's inflamed and irritated. We're gonna do the other side. We're gonna see what that feels like. Any problems with that? Just tight on the other side. Okay, so pulling, but nothing yeah. going down this nothing, side. No, nothing. The other thing I notice is that he's very tight in the neck. So I'm gonna look at his neck range of motion. So I'm gonna have you look over your left shoulder. 45, 50 degrees, can we look over to the right? Okay, so quite restricted still. He could definitely have better range of motion than that. One way we can try to rule out if this is a facet tightness problem or a muscular tightness problem is we can take the muscles out of the picture and have him do it again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get behind him. I'm gonna take his elbows like this. I'm gonna lift his arms up, okay? So he's not gonna do anything. I'm holding him up. I'm gonna have him rotate to the left again and to the right and we have a little bit better range of motion so that means that his upper traps are really tight they're holding him from rotating so we know that if we can work on the musculature up here his cervical spine range of motion is going to improve now the next thing i want to do to try to kind of just rule in this c7 that i'm suspicious of is uh, do the marquee maneuver so we're going to flip you around i I get rid of the pillow because people who have nerve root compression typically will be a little less comfortable when they are um, on their back and the neck goes into extension, okay? So any discomfort with this? It's, it's that same, that tightness. Kind of like that. this, this. Yeah. And, and, and I see this with a lot of people. They feel like it's a spasm or a tightness in that area. And um, so we kind of treat that sometimes, but we need to think about what is the underlying cause of that tightness or spasm. Um, any tingling in the hand while you're in yeah. this position? Yeah, okay. a little bit. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to test that tricep again while he's in this position, um, and then we're going to do some traction on him to see if the strength changes, okay? So we're gonna grab a stool, and let's go ahead and test his strength. So Charmin, I'm gonna have you come in. We're gonna hold that arm in that position. Okay, and I want you to give some resistance. Yeah. You're gonna try to uh, test his strength. Go ahead. Yeah. Push, push, push. Yeah. Good, okay. Now, yeah. what I do is I ask the patient to think about how that yeah. felt, okay? Was it weak? Were they able to hold a little bit more? Um, and, uh, and just think about that. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna reposition the neck. I'm gonna get it out of extension. Yeah. And I do about 15 degrees of flexion. I laterally flex to the contralateral side, to the opposite side, about 15 degrees, and I start to give some traction. Now I ask number one, does this feel any different? Yeah, that, the tingling goes away. Okay, so the tingling is settled down over here. And how about this discomfort? Uh, not as bad. Okay, now I'm gonna give him some traction. I'm gonna do about 15 to 20 pounds of traction and I'm just gonna hold, I only put my hand here just so that I can keep these fingers on the suboccipital area. I've got them cupped up nicely, okay? And I'm just giving him some nice traction. Should be fairly comfortable. We hold about 15 seconds or so. And then we're gonna retest the strength. Now, if he had wrist extension weakness, that's C6, we would expect that to improve. Um, if his biceps were weak, that's C5, we would ex expect that to improve. But today our problem area is uh, in the tricep where he has the weakness. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and retest the strength. Okay, and push real hard. Push, 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 push. And what does that feel like? Uh, feel stronger. Okay, D and could you tell that it was stronger? Big difference. Yeah, okay. So you get to sit right up. And you can just face that way. So. We need to be suspicious that his C7 nerve root is getting compressed. It could be by herniated disc. Um, it could be uh, the facet joint that is hypertrophied and causing some foraminal stenosis that is closing up on that area. Um, so we know that when we traction him, it opens that up and he feels a little bit better. How do we treat this? We're gonna put him on a postural program. We're gonna improve the mobility of his neck muscles with whatever modalities we want. It could be 
stimulation, heat, it could be dry needling. Um, we're going to work on some neck mobility, especially rotation side to side, stretch the traps, work on the muscles in between the shoulder blades, some scapular strengthening, and um, ultimately some strengthening back here. We're also going to put them into a cervical traction unit and I'm going to be linking all the uh, videos on how to do cervical traction at the bottom of this video. And uh, we're going to get them into traction hopefully two to three times a day for 15 to 20 minutes at a time to take some pressure off because we know he gets relief from that. Um, hopefully that'll settle things down, inflammation settles down, he starts to feel better and then we go from there. If he doesn't start to feel better with that, then we're going to consider uh, some diagnostic imaging to see if there are any uh, signs of a herniated disc or anything that is compressing on that nerve enough that needs to be managed on a surgical level. Uh, but again, Andy, thank you so much for uh, being my patient today. And uh, hopefully uh, we start to feel better soon. Yep. And thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up and uh, be sure to subscribe. Thanks.